Good to see you all. Such a big auditorium, I love it. It's massive, yeah. Who here likes Shrek? seen a lot of it yet. Um, I got here last night from London, so uh, yeah, I'm hoping to have a look around, but it looks, it's been great. I walked around this morning and it's been great, but the, the con has been fantastic, so, so far here it's been wonderful. How's it you guys? You lovely folks. Let's start with, uh, with you, David. Like, for me, I'm a big comic book nerd. Before, uh, sorry, nerd. Um, I'm a nerd, I've been told by my, my American friends. Um, I was reading the comics way before The Walking Dead even hit the screens, and the governor is one of my all-time favourite villains. I th he was so great, and I think you played him so well. What did you enjoy the most about playing the governor? God, I, well, I enjoyed the... Obviously, when in the comic books, when you meet the governor, as soon as you meet him, he's bad. You know, he is just a bad guy. Whereas in the novels, which I don't know if anyone, anyone's read, but, but the Jay, Jay Bazinga novel, there's a bit more of a story to him, there's a bit more of an origin story to how he became the governor of Bryan and all that. And, um, and that was where I got the story from. And I was very pleased when I met uh, Claire Mazzara, who was our, the showrunner on season three. Now what they wanted to do with the governor was to start him earlier in his story. So when Woodbury was always already sort of up and running and, and to be a bit give him a bit more depth, I think. So I was very pleased that that was what, what was gonna happen. I was a fan of the show, I hadn't read the comics. I did read the comics before I started, but uh, I came to the show as a fan of the TV show. So uh, I'd seen seasons one and two. Uh, I obviously knew Andrew Lincoln from the UK and also Lenny James. So uh, that was why I was into, into it. So I was, I was joining the show as a huge fan. Yeah. You smashed it, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely smashed it. Um, Ross, Aaron's journey has been tumultuous, <laughs> to say the least. There's a word for you. <laughs> um, I really like his arc. He's gone from the sort of softer character to someone who's really steely. Um, did you enjoy that transition as an actor? Yeah, it, uh, for the longest time I, I was wondering if it was ever going to happen because I felt like, you know, first he gets beaten up by Rick, then he gets beaten up by the Saviors, and he gets beaten up by the Heapsters and the Oceansiders. And there was just like at a certain point, and I told Angela, our, our showrunner, I said, when is this guy going to break? You know, because I don't care how nice you are, all of us have a breaking point. And I just wanted to see a darkness seep in to, to, to Aaron. And that's when she suggested cutting my arm off. And I said, oh, that sounds cool. That sounds great. And then, uh, and then you're like, well, then and, and Eric's going to die, and Jesus is going to die, and everyone you care about is going to die, and Negan's going to bash your friend's heads in. I'm like, oh, okay. That'll, that'll make him darker, I would imagine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been cool to see him go from like this really nice diplomatic uh, chap to the, 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 the mace-wielding machine he is now, you know. I, I know that you get asked a lot about what would you replace your hand with, kitchen utensils and so on. I think one interview I saw you say a whisk or something. Why? I, <laughs> That's like the most non-threatening kitchen utensil. I, first of all, I, I make a lot of eggs. I love, I love, <laughs> oh, I, right. I, I make cakes sometimes. And uh, I just, I, I was saying that the, the whisk with the, you know, the, not, yeah. not, not like that you have to like hand crank. Yeah. I just think it would be the funniest way to kill a zombie to just like slowly just crank away <laughs> with, a, with an egg whisk in their face. Like, ah, the one thing know. you've thought about this is a blunt sort of object. You'd be there for ages just like with your watch, kind of like, is this Mix guy it up, even you know. a scrap? <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to remind you this is a Q&A panel as well, so if you've got any questions. Oh, we got two people. 
Kibo, the one, one gentleman here. What's your name, my love, and do you have a question? Uh, I do. My name's Tianka. Um, I'm actually asking my question for a friend. It's for you, Ross. Um, I was just wondering if we could hear your John C. Riley impression. Oh, well, yeah, we don't want to hear that. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man, because I feel like I haven't slept much, so I'm probably going to wreck it. So, I don't know. <laughs> What's your name, my love? What's your quest? My name is Keenan, and uh, my question is if the governor and Negan joined forces, if the governor was still alive, how hard do you think he would have hit the Saviors and Alexandria and the Oceanside? How much damage do you think that those two could have done? Yeah, I think they would have done a lot of damage together. I think that the dynamic between the two would be interesting. I think, you know, it's about top dog. It's about whether those two guys could ever work together successfully, really. One of them would have to give in some sort of uh, status. I think the governor probably would go in there and play a little bit of low status at first. And then given the fact that he's very sneaky, I think he would have sort of then used that low stasis to get Negan's guard down and then strike him in another way. But I'd love to see them together. I, I've worked with Jeffrey actually. We did a show together called Extant with Halle Berry. So uh, he's a great mate of mine and he's a great guy as we, we both of us will test, testify. So uh, I'd love to work with them in any capacity actually, but it would be great to see those two characters together in some way. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you for your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you said that the governor of Redmond Field was a loving guy. He was a kind of loving kind of guy. Can you explain what you meant by that, please? Yeah, I think before, <laughs> I mean before, this, I, I think he's loving in many ways. I think before the zombie apocalypse, I think he was a regular guy. He was a family man, he was married, he had a child. You know, and I think he was a good guy. And I think the world that has, come at these people has defined them, not the world before, and it's about what, how he changed. But I also thought perversely with the governor was that he kept Penny in a cage in his, in his bedroom, which I think is a very loving thing. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, only because that's his daughter, and so regardless of what's happened to her, he's keeping her close. I mean, it's weird, but you know, there's a scene where he's brushing her hair and he's sort of looking after her and, and this, you know, this apocalypse came from nowhere, who's to say it could go away again, you know, so I felt it was quite a loving thing even though it was weird it seemed to me to be a very loving film thing to keep your daughter close to you and want her close and to look after her, so therefore when Michonne kills the daughter his daughter, when she, she kills Penny that's what tips him over to a different side. He suddenly go, goes from being bad to being psychotic. And it's that thing of seeing someone kill the person that we love so much. And I think lots of the characters have that relationship with people, don't they? And Herschel kept his... Yeah. You know, and so I think there is a sense of wanting, wanting to be close to the person you love, even though that person has changed and gone over. You know, that's really human, I think. So if David invites you in for dinner, yeah. uh, just, you know, RSVP it, you know, you're, mm. um, <laughs> my love, what's your name and what's your quest? My name is Kimia and I'm a big fan of Aaron, but not so much the governor. <laughs> Quite right. Good chance. I take that as a compliment. Although when Negan came around, I was actually hoping you would come back because you were nothing compared to Negan. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll wait and see. <laughs> But my question is for you, David. I was asked, wondering um, how it was to shoot the day that you had to cut off Herschel's head. I mean, was that hard for you? Was that emotional? Because I'm sure you're a lovely person in real life, so. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Uh, yeah, it was really tough. I mean, I think Ross would say as well, whenever, whenever anybody goes on the show who you've spent time with, it's really hard. And Scott, as we all know, was a very special person. You know, he was a great man. And he was one of the, when I joined the show, I was, you know, to be working with such a wonderful actor who I'd been seeing for a long time in films like In Cold Blood, The Great Gatsby. You know, this was an actor who I'd admired, not just as an actor, but as a man for many, time, for many years. 
And so when I read, when I read that episode, yeah, my heart sank because uh, I knew everyone, hey, everyone was going to hate me. But also that it was a tough thing to do. Uh, the day we did it, uh, you know, everybody turned, all the crew turned up and they all had like Herschel suspenders on and stuff like that. And it, was a, it was a mixed day for everybody. But that happens when a lot of people die on the show. They've become your friends, you know, they, you've become very close to them. And so it is hard uh, to see someone go after so long, you know. So, yeah, I had, the good thing was that I did that and then I died quite quickly. So I thought that would, people would see that I'd suffer. So that was good, yeah. But he was a great man, a great actor and a really great friend. So I was, uh, you know, it was hard to do, but it was hard to lose him in real life as well. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Hi there, what's your name? What's your question? My name is Judy, and my question, question is for Ross. Hey, um, since your, your character is such a nice guy, and you show a real good moral compass and everything, but if you had the chance to kill off any of the characters that are still on the show, who would you kill and why? If I have to k kill off anyone who's still alive on the show? Mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's easy. Negan. I mean, uh... I, I, it's funny because I, 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 I say that and people are always like, Negan, I'm like, yeah, Negan, he killed all my friends, he's indirectly responsible for Eric's death, and it's so funny because everyone else in the show just kind of let him slide for the longest time because he's got this redemption arc or whatever, and, and, and I love that, I love that he's gotten the redemption arc on the show, but I think for anyone who was in that lineup who saw what he did, um, I, I don't think you can forget that or forgive that um, because no one forced him to do that. You know, um, you can be a strong ruler and lead with uh, an iron fist and still not kill random people just because you you view them as a threat. So I think that's always been in the back of his mind, which is why every time you know Jeffrey and I work together, we're always just kind of trying to stoke the flames. And it's great working with him because he always uh, reminds me of the. Super Bowl from eight years ago when the Broncos lost to the Super the Seattle Seahawks. Okay, now, is that a Seahawks fan right there? Are you wearing a Mariner shirt too? Oh my god. Get this guy out of here. No, no, get him out of here. Oh my god. Were you planted here just for that? <laughs> did, did Jeffrey send you here? Um, <laughs> but every time I work with him, Jeffrey will come up and he'll be like, Man, your Broncos are sure aren't doing so good this year, are they? And I'm like, Jeffrey, I will murder you right now. <laughs> like, uh, and and he's, it's great because he's doing it fun. He just knows how to turn the screws. And, um, you know, uh, now we got Russell Wilson, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, genuinely in the zombie apocalypse, like, what sort of role would you play? Because it's something I think about sometimes, because I've got no discernible skills apart from playing guitar. So I could be a bard of some sort, um, play very sad songs. That would be important. We would need something like that in the apocalypse. Some kind of depressing entertainer that only plays post-rock from the 90s. Um, so what about, what about you guys? Like, what would be your roles genuinely? How, how do you think you would step up in the zombie apocalypse? Go on, David, you start. Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about that a lot. <laughs> um, I think maybe, you know, that sort of self-survival stuff of uh, growing stuff, growing your own crops, growing your own sort of food, knowing how to use that stuff, you know, that's, that's the thing I would like to do. I mean, I quite like to do that anyway. I mean, sort of doing a lot of the vegetable stuff in the garden and stuff like that. I know that sounds really boring, like I should get my slippers and sort of check out, but I, I have been doing that. I, I find that really sort of cathartic and nice to do. And I think that's a sort of skill that we've sort of lost about sort of growing and uh, cooking our own food really. So I've been doing a lot of that over the years. So um, more and more of that, I think. So maybe I could bring that to, uh, to the zombie apocalypse, some sort of vegetable cooking. <laughs> Ross, what about you? What, what would you do? I guess I could do impressions and try to hope that people won't kill me because they make them laugh. But uh, I, 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 I was an Eagle Scout and uh, I feel like yeah, so I don't, 
Cup Chart of Quag or nothing but like, you know, a lot of those skills in the Boy Scout Handbook. And I still have Did my Did you start to fly them? Of course. Yeah, I made you together with good and made. I can do it. That's I'll, it. I'll make one right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the Boy Scout Handbook, uh, if, you, if you don't have it already, I gotta tell you, just pick it up now because if there is an actual apocalypse, you're gonna want that book because it. it's it's very useful. Yeah. So I'm just saying, yeah. tying knots and all. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I can only the idea of Ross just doing impressions by the fire where I play sad songs and you're going, oh god, oh god, not again, oh my god, while well, you're peeling potatoes. Yeah, and I'll do my Mo my Morrissey, not David Morrissey, but my Morrissey. You'll be the you'll be the Smiths, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you will be. Because you play that. the Smiths, right? Yes, yes we perfect. can do that. All right. I'll be in the garden. <laughs> Those pesky kids and their woman songs. Hello, my love. What's your name and uh, what would you, who would you like to ask a question to? Uh, both of them. Hi, sure. I'm Julian. Uh, if your characters ever got to meet, uh, how do you think they would interact with each other? Well, you know, I think uh, it depends when when they meet in their arc. Really, I think. Uh, I could see, I could see you working in Woodbury. I think you know Woodbury. You know, at one point Woodbury was a really successful place. It was working well. It was sort of had a community. It was sort of a dictatorship, but it was working okay. I think we would have, in that point of our story, I think we would have got on very well. I think you know what the governor was looking for was a good, solid community, and that's what I think he would have brought. But uh, later on, I think there would have been. Uh, once the, once the governor went psychotic, I think everybody was uh, up for grabs, right? I think uh, Aaron's always been desiring of community and helping rebuild the world, but he's also got a, he's a great judge of character, so I feel like in those early days, he'd be like, this guy seems all right, but I'm gonna you know, keep an eye on him. But much like Michonne, as the uh, series goes on in, in season three, uh, I think she's the one that first starts to kind of poke holes in this world, and. It's uh, Andrea who's kind of like, He's, he seems fine, and then they sleep together and it's all good. Um, right? Totally. It was, it was wonderful after we slept together, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, what, what could have gone wrong? Exactly, yeah. Um, but I think, I think they would have gotten along at first too, I agree. So. But also I think what the governor was doing was he was presenting one personality to his populace, and what you saw was him doing something else, you know, privately. So I think for a while the people in his community thought he was a, a good guy. Only the audience knew that he was scheming behind and you know doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. So um, yeah, I think if we'd met at that time, I think Aaron would have fitted in really well. Really. Thank you Great very question. much for your question. Do you have someone else? Thank What's you. this time? Hello there, my love. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Greeley, and I was just wondering, you've probably been asked this a hundred times, but who is your favorite actress or actor to work with, to both of you? That's a tough one, isn't it? Because, you know, you're, you're leaving out everybody else. Well, I would say Andrew Lincoln as our lead actor. I think any show needs a lead actor who really doesn't, you know, just learn the lines and turns up. They have to take that role on board in front and behind the camera. And everything else comes from them. The atmosphere is set by the leading actor. And I've had it on other shows, you know, when I did Doctor Who with David Tennant and stuff. They're, they're people who, yeah, great actors, you know, but also leaders, you know, Andrew, he, know, he knows everybody's name. He knows everybody's kid's name. He knows he's the first guy there. He's the last guy to leave. He makes sure you're okay as well as him being okay. He's totally professional. He's absolutely committed. So that means that nobody else can sort of mess around or give less than 100%. So you need a leading actor who brings it, don't you? And I think for, for me, uh, he set the tone. And that was, that was great for every actor that came along at it. I work on the show. I echo those sentiments entirely. Like, uh, you know, Cudlets, I think, was Cudlets and, uh, you know, you know Abraham and Eugene were probably the most fun to work with because they were always cracking jokes in between takes and everything. But um, in terms of who is my favorite to work with, I'd definitely say Andy because the guy didn't break character in the seven years that I worked with him. Uh, not but once, and that was when he punched me in the nose in the second episode I was in. He felt so bad because it was each time he punched, missed me by like this much, no problem. But the last time he was coming up with a little too much steam, and he got some of my nose. And as soon as I fell on the ground, he's like, "Oh mate, I'm sorry, are you okay?" And I was like, "Everything's right." It's like because I, he 
you know, and stupidly, you know, I just kind of, even though I knew he was British, I just, because he's always doing the Rick Grimes voice, I just never heard that side of him, and I was just like, there he is. Um, and you couldn't have asked for a nicer, more gentle, and, and, and giving actor. You know, when you're acting with him, it's, you, you don't have to work as hard because Andy believes he's Rick Grimes. He believes he's Rick Grimes. So you could just react authentically to that and it, it makes your job so much easier. It really does. So I, I, I hope and to, 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 I really hope I get a chance to work with him again someday, but who knows if that'll happen. We'll see, but. Thank you. Thank you, great question. I wanted to ask you guys as well, ask, I like to ask most actors this. The last person I asked was Idris Elba. And um, I wanted to ask like, is there a moment, like a scene, a line, um, a moment when you're on set either on The Walking Dead or any other job where you go, this is, this is the most ridiculous job I have ever done, you know, punching a zombie in the face. Like, you know, those sort of weird moments that make you think, I'm doing this as a job. Yeah, I feel that about 200 times a day. Um, yeah, I used to feel that a lot. I mean, I used to really, as, as a younger actor, I used to think, this is ridiculous that I'm earning money like this. Particularly when I thought about how my parents went to work and stuff like that, and I thought, you know, here I am dressing up in a costume and I'm... Doing... But I feel that less now. I feel that now about my job is I'm very proud and lucky to do my job. And I also do this thing, which is interesting, Andrew Lincoln and I used to do this a lot, was we'd be somewhere in the middle of some field, boiling hot, covered in blood, you know, sort of sweating, sort of having done scenes of running away from zombies and stuff, and Andrew would turn to me and go, isn't this great? <laughs> and, you, and you have to do that. You, I constantly, now as an actor, have to remind myself that I am living my dream. My dream as a kid was to be an, a working actor. And that's what I'm doing. And so I have to remind myself to appreciate it every minute of the day I'm doing it. There are aspects of my job, our job, which is ridiculous. But how great is that? <laughs> that's great as well. So I have to sort of uh, really remind myself that that is, is. Where as a younger actor, I would slightly think, what are you doing, David? You know, you should be building things. You should be, you know, look at your hands. You've never done a day's work in your life. I don't think that now. I'm really proud of my job, and I know it's hard work as well. So, you know, I'm much more in tune with it than I used to be. I don't know about you. Uh, I think for me, the season six where Maggie and I are trying to find Glenn and we get stuck in the sewers and I was covered in fake poop. Uh, <laughs> that for me was one of those moments where I was like, wow, well, I've made it. <laughs> really, you know, like, it was just such a surreal thing because the art department on our show is probably the best art department I've ever worked with. 100%. And they do such a good job. And they, from what I understand, they took uh, Snickers bars and ground them up in blenders, but only so much. And they just poured gallons and gallons of like sl slightly. Sorry for this grossing you out. You watch The Walking Dead, so you probably didn't gross you out too bad. Uh, but we're just covered in this stuff and I'm swimming around in this and. Uh, it was really low light, and I remember the zombie that was going to kill me was coming out just right uh, up, 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 you know, between my legs, and you know, I was like, "Oh my god!" And you know, I didn't have my glasses on because I had terrible, I had terrible vision before I got LASIK, and this thing swiped at my face and and you know, got a got a chunk of my uh, eyeball and everything, and he, he immediately was just apologizing profusely because he couldn't see because he's got the lenses on his eyes. And we're both just in this apology cycle. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. We're both covered in crap. And we're just like, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. It was okay, I, I should have re reacted faster. I'm, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. And it was just like, what are we doing? What the hell is this? We're both just covered in poop and apologizing to each other. And he's a zombie. It was cool, yeah, so that was, that was a moment for me. Yeah, yeah, so. Cool, I like that, really cool. Put off chocolate bars for life, but cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but because for the diet, so. Uh, thank you very much for asking a question. What do you want to ask? Um, yeah, my name is Ben. I'm here to ask a question both for me and my best friend who couldn't be here. Our favorite show is The Walking Dead. We've been watching it together for years. Um, so, love you, Cody. Um, but for both of you, what is a memory that you have of filming the show that's like behind the scenes, maybe didn't talk about before, but that's like one of your favorite memories 
or just something funny that happened with your other actors? So, uh, I've got a lot, actually. I mean, we do laugh a lot on the show. I mean, we do have fun, you know. I mean, there's a lot of things that go, not just go wrong, but we have to, we're there for long times, so they're long days, so, I mean, and it is a great cast and crew. Well, I just started, I just started on the show. I was very nervous. Uh, you know, I knew I was entering this great show, and I was sort of, I knew it was a big character and stuff. And Michonne was there, she was with her two walkers, the guys who had no arms and stuff, and no jaws. And they were amazing, and I saw them at bed, and just thought, wow, this is one hell of a show. And then I got lost on the set, and I was walking around, I didn't know where I was. And I walked out into a courtyard, and the two zombies with no arms and no jaws were having a cigarette outside. <laughs> And I sort of went out and I saw them sort of having a cigarette and it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen in my life. These two guys had no jaws so their mouths were quite far back. And, and I just thought, this is a weird show. This is the weirdest show I've ever And one of them just went, hi man, who, hey, how are you, how, how are you doing and stuff? And I was like, this is crazy. So that was weird. I remember, you know, Scott and I used to have some great laughs on the, on the, on the set all the time. My other one was, uh, I had to drive a truck at one point with Michael Rooker in it, and, uh, <laughs> and Rooker was trying to make me laugh, I was driving along, and I had a temporary eye patch on because I just lost my eye, so I jumped in this car and we're on camera, and I, at one point I thought, I don't know where I'm going, so you actually see me on the set going, driving, and they go, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just crazy. And Mike was telling me that, you know, we drive on the right side of the road, and I was like, yeah, but we're in the field, it doesn't make any difference. So all those things, lots of things really for me. I think the same thing for when you see the, the walkers in their uh, natural element, you know, when you realize that in between takes, they're just lovely people who are just trying to avoid the heat, like everyone else. And I remember my daughter and Judith, uh, so Gracie and Judith were trying to teach a few of the walkers how to floss. <laughs> and if you watching zombies do this while they put the, the freaking zombie makeup, I was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Great floss, by the way. What's that? I still can't do it. It's been many yeah, years. I, my, both, and I, I, actually, I, I learned kind of how to do it during the pandemic, and I came back and I saw my the, Annabelle, who plays my daughter, and I was so excited and proud until I was like, Annabelle, I, I finally got it down. And she looks at me, she goes, Ross, that is so 2019. <laughs> I remember once being out in Atlanta, I was in Whole Foods or something, and this woman came up to me, you know, normal dress, and she went, you cut off my head last week. And I was like, what? And she'd been, she'd been on the show as a zombie, and I'd go, and you forget that there are people who live in the city with you, you know, you just see them around. That was so weird. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Oh, look. It's a Mario. It's a Mario. It's a me, it's a him, it's a him! What's your question? Yes, um, I'm just letting you guys know, I have been watching The Walking Dead, so uh, thank you Hayden if you're seeing this. Um, so my question is, is that, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get my thoughts here, hold on a second. If there was that one thing you want to change in The Walking Dead, what would it be and why? No zombies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my death. Actually, I think uh, I was so close to, like, me and Rick, he was down, he was out, he was never getting up, and then Michelle came and saved his life. But um, I, I would have liked to have been on the show longer, because I just loved doing it. I mean, I really love the character. I love being with the, the cast and the crew. has to be said, that it's the best crew I've ever worked with in my life. I think they, the, you know, Georgia, the conditions are quite tough down there, and the show demands a lot from the crew, and I think Russ would agree that, you know, they're just out of this world to work with. And you see what goes on in the front of the camera, but the work that goes on behind is unbelievable. And so I missed it. So I would have changed my death. I would have liked to have been on the show a little bit longer. Uh, mine's, mine's probably less 
what I would change in the show, but more how I uh, came onto the show in the first few seasons. I was in such a bad place financially and emotionally. I was like a hundred thousand dollars in debt. I was I literally decided to give up acting uh, and I could quit. And I was about to move to New York to pursue photography and art and writing, which probably would have driven me even, even further into debt, but I was like, at least I'll be in control of this, because with acting you have to prove that you're worthy of a job every time, you know, even now we, we don't get straight offers, oftentimes you'll have to go and, hey, I, I was in a few things, but can I get a new job? And they're like, well, we'll see, let's see if you can act, you know, and it's always like that, but with photography and art, you just make your thing, and if someone wants to buy it or someone wants to likes it, great. Um, so I'd really just given up entirely, and then when I got this opportunity, I, I actually told my manager I didn't really want to go in for the audition because I didn't want another rejection under my belt before I transitioned into this new field. And uh, when I finally got the job, amazingly, I, I still can't believe it happened on my birthday eight years ago. Um, I was overjoyed and then scared shitless because that was one of my favorite shows. And the last thing you want to do is be the person that messes up one of your favorite shows, right? So on the way to Atlanta, I sweat through three different pairs of shirts. I was so nervous, and I you know, met Andy, he was lovely, and everyone was great. But those first few seasons, I was so nervous about um, you know, getting killed off, and, and you know, I, 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 I want to be a part of this, but I, I just, you know, I, I need this, I want this, and, but, I, but I was just not living in the moment. And I remember Josh McDermott pulled me aside, Eugene, he pulled me aside and he's like, dude, you gotta chill out with you know whether or not they're gonna kill you because none of us know if we're gonna live or die on this show ever, and you just gotta enjoy it. And that I, I, I took those words home and I thought about it for a few, and I, then I finally just started to just relax and enjoy it. And it was the best lesson I ever got on the show and in life because we don't know how much time any of us got, you know, none of us do. And so I think it's really just important that we take moments to say. Hey man, isn't this isn't this great? Like, look, we're in Salt Lake City. We're I mean, it's a beautiful city. We had a great show. You're you're dressed in a Mario outfit. Like, that's awesome. You know, like everyone's having a good time. Like, this is great. This is great. You know, and and I think if we don't take time to acknowledge those great moments, we'll miss the point entirely. And I was definitely missing the point the first few years I was on the show. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, what are your names and what is your question? Um, we were wondering what your most physically demanding scene that you ever had to do on the show. Physically demanding scenes. So it's all it's all pretty demanding uh, physically, uh, but I think I did uh, that last scene uh, where I attacked the prison, and uh, you know it's really. There's, there's a great guy who was on the seasons I was on, who was a pyrotechnic guy called uh, Daryl Pritchett. And uh, so he blows everything up. And, uh, and I played golf with him at the weekend, he was a great guy. And he said, oh, when we get to the prison, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. And I was like, oh, what's happening, Daryl, what's happening? He said, I can't tell you, it's going to be great. And then I read the episode and I was like, we blow it up. I mean, this is crazy. This is, and it was about four days, and it was really hard. And it was killing Herschel, it was having a fight with Rick, being killed by Michonne, all that stuff. It was attacking the prison with this these massive explosions. And the great thing about Daryl is, you know, he does big stuff, but you always feel safe. He's great at just making you say, look, this is it, this is what's going to happen, he explains everything to you. But that, those four days, and also I knew that they were going to end with my death, so emotionally I was quite all over the place. I remember them well. They, I still have uh, bruises from that, but that time. But that was the big physical, physical time for me. Uh, my, five years ago, when I'm trying to convince the Oceansiders to join the fight against the Saviors, um, I'm supposed to be on a hunger strike. And if anyone who's ever worked in a film or a TV set knows, it's hard to stay away from crafty, especially on that set. Like we have some of the best craft services in, in, the, in the industry, I think. And, and like I like to eat, I like to eat, especially when it's like 
really cold or really hot, and there's nothing else to do, you're like, no, I'm another candy bar, or another Snickers, or whatever. And it, it didn't work, it didn't me up, but um, I, I emaciated myself for like five days leading up to it, so I was, I was smoking my cigarettes, eating apples, did the Christian Bale method for machinists, and I was just like trying to like lose as much weight as I could. And um, I, I, I was so weak that I could barely stand up, and then it was at the end of November, people think George is very hot, and it is, but towards October, November, December months, man, it gets cold. It gets really like that wet and cold that gets in your bones, you know? And uh, for a couple nights in a row, I had to basically just be, be leaned up against a tree, you know, waiting for uh, them to come out. Of course, they don't come out, but the, the walkers do. And I have to fight all these walkers over and over again. The ground, I remember being so frozen solid, and they had this fake rain just pouring on us over and over again and you know it's not heated or anything so you're just doing the best you can and fighting and rolling around in the mud and the, the blood and the, the water and everything and then in between takes I remember they would just throw an emergency blanket over me and I'd just be huddled by the fire and it was just, it was that was intense I, I, I they, they thought I had hypothermia towards the end of it but um, all good yeah so we do, we do some fun stuff on the show yeah it's great thank you very much Good time for one more question, and I'm gonna have to ask you about the last episodes. Uh, so, we got one more question? Let's go for it. Okay, sir, what's your name and uh, what's your question? My name's Jake, and I'm a huge fan of the comic books and became a huge fan of the show. Uh, every time we lose a character that actually made it through the comic book, it's always kind of depressing. Um, but there was some really epic battles displayed in the comics and in the show. What were your favorite? scenes that you guys had a chance to be a part of? Um, there was a scene where we, uh, I, I was stalking Andrew, and she was in like a barn, and I really, just because there was, there was not a lot of dialogue in that, and uh, we approached it very much like some sort of uh, psychological horror film, so we used a lot of different sounds, a lot of sort of scraping of stuff. Like, ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> There's a lot of that, and then I, I, I was whistling some song which sort of echoed everywhere, uh, and that, I was really pleased with it, and also because there wasn't a lot of dialogue, I was able to talk with the director of that particular episode, and sort of we brought in a lot of stuff, and when the episode came out, that stuff was still in there, so I was very pleased with my input in that episode, so yeah, that was, that was a really great thing to do, I really love that. But I also love the attacking of the prison. And then I really love the end of the season four when the governor comes back and he's just on the floor and he's looking for death and then he discovers that new family and he decides to play low status in this group and he just can't do it. But I love that arc as well when I came back in season four. Um, I think the lineup as brutal as it was, and I think, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'll ever want to watch that episode again. Uh, it was so brutal to shoot, and such a um, disturbing episode to watch and to be a part of, of course, but I think it's honestly some of our best work. Um, everyone on that lineup, you know, when Negan was doing his speech back and forth, was uniformly like bringing tears constantly, take after take, and you're on your knees, freezing your butts off. Um, it's, it's obviously terrible the way we lost Glenn and Abraham, but the way that was shot, the way it was edited, and just the emotionality of it all was just incredible. Um, but uh, on top of that, I think that the scene that was most fun to shoot and also to watch was the battle for Hilltop against the Whisperers last season. That was just a blast. I mean, we had, again, Daryl Pritchard, our pyrotechnics guys and everything, just, they're, they're just the best, and they, and they have guys running around covered in, you know, kerosene, and then you light them and they put them out, everyone's safe, of course, but like, just watching this, you're like, God, you feel like you're in 300 or, or some like battle movie, it felt great, you know, because I've never been a part of something like that, you know, and I hope I get a chance to down the road, but you never know, and it was cool, it's cool. And like, every episode is like an epic movie. It just is like you're in the biggest budget movie you've ever made, you know, it feels like that every week, doesn't it? Thank you very much Thank for your you. question. Thank you. So before we wrap up, can we have a round of applause for everyone who asked questions today? Yeah, this is sweet. Okay, so Ross, it's come to an end. The last eight episodes are airing very soon in October, beginning of October, right? 
So, I'm not gonna ask you for spoilers. Everybody dies. <laughs> everybody dies. It's very sad. It's a very sad day for everybody. Literally everybody at the show, they just all die. It's very sad, believe me, believe me. You're gonna you're gonna cry your hearts out, okay? You've never seen something so sad in your entire life. It's all death, just nothing but death. Blood, sweat, tears, everyone dies, it's very sad. You're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Did you do your Ewan McGregor to Ewan McGregor? Oh, I've not. Oh, I, oh I, so I met Ewan McGregor um, last month in, in San Antonio, and he was lovely. Everything he says, he's just effervescent. He's very happy to be everywhere he is. And uh, I met him, and I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan. And he goes, oh, lovely, great. And I said, well, I can't talk right now because I'm so awkward. I'm so happy to meet you. And then I just trailed off, and I didn't, I didn't do my impression. But. Very good. Uh, 10 out of 10 for the Scottish accent. Yes, yeah, so that's an East Coast accent. Accent, very difficult. Right. Better than Dan Fogler's Scottish accent. Yeah, much better. Um, guys, you have been absolutely wonderful, and haven't they been great? Ross and David.